So every year at the end of Rocking the Daisies, they upload like an Instagram or Facebook post uh, showing all the lost and found. And unfortunately, my phone was not found because it was not lost to begin with. It was stolen. So let's let me take it back to the beginning. Rigorous, rigorous, rigorous. Hey. Gang gang looking rigorous, look my champagne but I'm rigorous, look my campaign looking rigorous, look whole team hella rigorous, lifestyle so rigorous, what? hairstyle so rigorous, the top five ain't rigorous, if you left out this rigorous. So I've been excited about rocking the daisies for a couple of years now. The last one I went to was in 2016 and it was also the first one I ever went to. I had an absolutely amazing time and running off that nostalgia, I decided that next time I go to daisies, I'm going to have the best time of my life because that's all that I remember. And so came earlier this year and Daisy's was selling their tickets. I promise you, I was one of the first thousand people to buy a ticket. As soon as the tickets went live, I literally waited two minutes and then I was in the line to get my tickets. I got my tickets and I was ready. I was waiting. I knew I was not going to sell these tickets no matter what because I am going to be rocking the Daisy's. Fast forward a couple of months and it's rocking the Daisy's weekend. I get on my flight, I get to Cape Town, I see my family for a few hours, steal my mom's car and I'm on the way to rocking the daisies i get there a little bit late because i was spending some time with family also i was waiting for sasha to uh, get off her flight sasha and george also went to rock in the daisies it was quite a fun group actually when we finally get to rock in the daisies we have to wait in line for two hours keep in mind we are vips but i don't really mind because i'm not always used to the vip treatment but two hours was a pretty long time what made me feel better about myself was the fact that people who had spent thirteen thousand rand for their tents for the weekend were standing in the exact same line that I was standing with. I know, I know, it's kind of mean. I was enjoying other people's misfortune, which is probably why I'm making this video right now. So after two long hours in the line, I actually ended up making friends with random people, random white people. I forgot I was in Cape Town. There were a lot of white people. Once you move to Joburg, you'll kind of realize that you don't necessarily interact with as many white people as you would when you live in Cape Town. So that was a little bit of a culture shock. It's weird. I know I'm from Cape Town, but after spending so many years up here, seeing that many, definitely a culture shock. After two hours in the line, we managed to get inside. It's like 9 p.m. now. We got there late, okay? I say, I say, we got there late. It's whatever, I don't mind. It's still Friday night, it's not Saturday night. That's where everything really goes down. So when we arrive at the gate, they give you a number that has your tent. I was not gonna tent in general camping. I did that back in 2016. I did not enjoy it. All the dude bros like drunk, running up and down past your tent, falling on your tent. It's just chaos in that general area. So I always told myself I would pay for for a really good tent like a not like a really good tent that's like over 10,000 rand but like a tent where I can you know go in and feel comfortable and so I did so when you get there they give you a tent number you go and you find the tent and you get inside so after literally like 20 minutes looking for my tent because the numbers were so confusing I eventually find my tent and I realize there's a lock on it and I'm like oh this is really safe I love that I wonder where the keys are I use my phone my torch to look into the tent and what do i see there are already bags in there which means the lock was not from rocking the daisies but from people who decided you know what this is our tent now and so that was my first problem at rocking the daisies it wasn't the line it was the fact that my tent was taken from me but the daisy staff worked pretty swiftly um they cut the guys like bolts off and they were about to take their stuff out of the tent until i noticed their ticket their ticket had their actual tent number so it would have been easy for them to find their tent i don't know why they struggled so much Maybe they were really excited for the rave that was going on like 100 meters away. So I decided, you know what? It's fine. It's rocking the daisies. It's peace, love, and niceness. So I decided, you know what? Since I know where their tent is, they probably just got a little confused. And so I went and I took their tent instead. Now, unfortunately, we had already cut their bolt. So we left them a little letter saying, hey, you used the wrong tent and we we're about to take it from you but then we decided not because we realized where your tent was and we took that instead all is good now friday night happens we're chilling with the friends uh they get their work done george and sasha were actually working at days while george was working at daisy's sasha and i were not we were just there to have some fun so friday night happens saturday uh happens it's actually a really fun day it's a little bit windy like my allergies are killing me but it's an okay day saturday night comes up like everybody's excited saturday night at rocking the 
the daisies is when everything goes from here to here. It's the night that everybody does not remember, but also does not want to forget. So it's, it's a tricky thing to do. I think I speak for a lot of people who will say that this year they went to Rockin' the Daisies for the vibes and not for the performances because I, I, I don't know. The level that Rockin' the Daisies usually is at when it comes to um, performers and, and international performances is way higher than it was this year. So a lot of us were like, we'll still go watch the performances. I mean, those musicians are amazing, but we're definitely going more for the friendship and the vibes and the meeting people there and just spending the weekend with your friends out camping. So the musicians weren't something that I was really excited for, uh, except for one musician. One, there was one musician and I've seen him countless times, but I was like, I am excited because I haven't seen him probably in two years and that was Nasty C. So while everyone was enjoying every other performance, I was just waiting for that one performance from Nasty C. If you've known me even for a little while, then you'll know he is my favorite South African hip hop musician arguably my favorite South African musician, but that's, like I said, arguably. So the performances start happening. Blackie performs, I am having the time of my life. George is having a spiritual moment in the corner. He absolutely adores Blackie. The level that I enjoy Nasty C, that's the level that he enjoys Blackie. So he was having the time of his life. I was having the time of my life. Next up, we have Nasty C, and that's when I'm like, it's gonna be my time to shine. Now keep in mind, during every other performance I was at, I was holding my phone like this. The grip that I had on my phone is the same grip that a toddler has on a chip. So Nasty C comes on and it's time for him to perform. I'm in the middle of the crowd. I'm like, I'm, I'm not gonna be at the back, but I'm not really interested in being at the front. So Nasty C starts performing. I'm obviously losing my mind and this is the moment where not only did I lose my mind, I also lost my grip on my phone. I had my phone in my pocket. I was wearing a hoodie because it was very cold in the evening. So I was having my hands in my hoodie like this. As soon as Nasty C comes on, I, I don't want to hold my phone in the air. So I left it in my pocket and then my hands were in the air. I, I, I don't know what to tell you guys. I was just having way too much fun. When he came on with that, what's that? Um, that song with him and, and AKA, oh man, that song just takes me to a different place. And he performed it and I was out there rapping nice things with the lips and the curve, Hi hips and the hips and the curve, lips and the curve in my, in my corner, a 10 on my lap, Maradona. Anyway, I was there excited. And that is when they took advantage of me when I was praising Nasty C. It took about five minutes. No, it wasn't even five minutes. I didn't take my hands out of my pocket for that long because I knew my phone was unattended. So I promise you, max a minute, maybe a minute and a half. I was like, yeah, nasty C. And the guy was like, yeah, let your phone. And he took it right out of my pocket. When I noticed, I was like, ah, phone is gone. That's fine. Uh, let me just enjoy the rest of my night. But my friend saw me having that mental exchange with myself and was like, is everything okay? I was like, no piggy, my phone is gone. And he's like, what do you mean your phone is gone? I'm like, it, it kind of just got stolen. What do you mean just got, did somebody mic? No, I, it was in my pocket and now it's not. And I know I didn't drop it. And I, yo, that's when my friends lost their minds. Where's your phone? They were moving people. I'm like, guys, there are thousands of people here. My phone could be on the other side of the crowd already. There's no use. Let's just enjoy our Saturday night. If I'm sad now, cool. I'm gonna be sad now. I'm gonna be sad again tomorrow. So I'm just going to choose to be sad tomorrow. So that night I was like, guys, let's not ruin our night. Let's still enjoy ourselves. My phone is gone. I am not going to find it and that is okay. I knew I was gonna be sad the next day and I was like, what's the use of being sad tonight, man? Everything's good. Everybody's having fun. My friends are very happy. They're healthy. I didn't get mugged. I got pickpocketed. So I didn't have a like massively traumatic experience. So let's just try and have fun. My friends are not buying it, but I was genuinely, I was okay. I've been wanting to buy a new phone. It kind of just gave me the extra little push to buy a new phone um and you know i didn't really look for it i went on find my friends the person had already switched it off i raised everything off of the phone and they've been texting me ever since uh asking me to unlock my phone they send you like this weird code guys if you ever lose your phone and you receive a text saying please log into your icloud and they even name your phone that's a red flag don't do that they'll log into your phone they'll delete it off of your icloud so you will never find it again i mean not that i think i'm ever gonna find it again but at least they won't be able to use it they're still sending me text they haven't been able to unlock it they have like a a dummy phone right now so that was my rocking the daisies experience and i was not the only one i met up with a couple of other people who said they also got pickpocketed and guess when it happened during the nasty c concert guys those guys were watching focus before they came 
They were watching Focus. They were like, we're going to pickpocket all of them. And they chose the SEC because they knew we'd all be celebrating. We wouldn't be focused on our pockets. That was my experience of rocking the daisies. Kind of sucked that I lost my phone, but I had an amazing time with my amazing friends. And uh, yeah, I, I hope for the people who did go to rocking the daisies that you had just as much fun as I did. Hope you didn't lose anything. They just posted now everything that got um, found. But unfortunately, my phone was not lost. It was stolen, so it wasn't found. But... Positive thing that happened, I guess, in all that is that uh, I got a new phone. Look at this beauty. It's my favorite color too. It's green. It is the uh, 13 because I'm not buying a 14 because apparently it's the same phone as the 13. So I bought a 13. I'm very happy. Uh, the phone that was stolen was a 10. So definitely an upgrade for me. I hope you guys are having a beautiful week. Thank you very much for listening to my little rant and review of Rocking the Daisies. 9 out of 10. They should have watered the sand at the beach bar because the way that shit was blowing on the Saturday and the Sunday. Come on, guys. Do better. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you soon with another one. I love you so much. Peace.